I've gone live on a lot of different platforms. If you're on in my Facebook group or either in my um, on my Facebook page, the Ignited page, or in my Managing Difficult Classroom group, or even on Twitter, thank you for tuning in. And if you're watching the replay, thank you um, for um, being a part of my community. So what I do here on Teaching Tip Tuesday is I help math teachers of struggling learners that are, that, I'm tongue-tied, those are students that are either ELL students, they could be 504 students, um, students, special ed students with IEPs, um, dyslexic students. I help those teachers of those students, if you have those students, that will be you, um, to increase student achievement and effectively manage their classrooms. And how do I do that? I do that through project-based learning, good instructional math strategies, um, response to intervention, um, <laughs> technology integration, and that good old classroom management um, all rolled into one. Those are the components that I talk about here on Teaching Tip Tuesday. And tonight, I am talking about math intervention, people, not programs. But if you can't catch me live on Teaching Tip Tuesday, you can always watch the replay on Twitter, YouTube, or any of those actual stations. So thank you, thank you again for tuning in. And if you have any questions, you can always leave it in the comment section. And I will definitely respond as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and dive right in to Teaching Tip Tuesday. Um, this is a 30-minute show, so we go from 8.30 to 9 o'clock um, on Tuesdays. And tonight's topic is very important because I get asked all the time, uh, what do you use for your math intervention? How do you get students to move? Um, you have really good success. Well, it's people, not, not the programs. And people are always saying, well, I need a program. What math program are you using for response to intervention? Response to intervention is not a program. And if you go to, let me move over. If you go to the RTI Action Network, it gives you a basic understanding of what response to intervention is. And it says that RTI is a multi-tiered approach. It didn't say program. It said it's a multi-tiered approach to identifying um, students that struggle. Um, it can be with behavior or academics. So for tonight, we're talking about academics. And it says that RTI starts with good instruction, research-based instruction. And then what it talks about universal screening. So that's what RTI, not did, it didn't say that it started with the program. It says that it starts with good instruction. And when we talk about instruction, instruction has nothing to do with the program. And I tell teachers all the time, um, I have my master's degree in curriculum instruction and technology. And when I went through the program, we had to examine different um, curriculums. And what I noticed about curriculums, they can only put in what the authors deem important. So if your students qualitative and quantitative data is not driving your response to intervention, then that's a problem because you're not meeting the needs of your students. So that is what RTI, it is not a program. You are the response to intervention program. Everything else is a supplement. And you're probably saying, well, I need it to, for resources. Your resources are in your other grade levels. And that brings me to this, this blog post. And it said it's titled Math Intervention Pe People Not Programs. And I talk about in this blog post 
how I use the vertical alignment and the skills from other grade levels to teach my students because it's vertically aligned. Your, if you purchase a program for response to intervention, you're still going to have to supplement that program. There's not a program that you can purchase that's going to close the gaps for you. Because that's not what response to intervention is a multi-tiered approach that starts with your good instruction and it's research based and it's based on data, data that comes from the student that comes from that universal screening. And a lot of teachers don't understand that you know, you I've taught without a textbook for years. You don't have to have a textbook. Textbooks are a supplement. What guides your what you teach your students and what's taught in intervention are the standards if you're common core i'm in the state of texas so our teaks a texas is essential knowledge and skills they govern what i teach so why would you go outside of that and purchase a program where your state has already set it up. If you, for example, I teach ninth graders. They're Algebra 1 students. Are they on grade level? Absolutely not. Because I'm the math intervention teacher. I provide support for those students. And I teach, I taught one strategic math class. Well, the way that I found where the kids were struggling at was through the on grade level teach. You have to unpack those teaks. And I know some teachers say, well, what do you mean unpack? Well, what skills do the children need to master the on-grade level teak or the on-grade level standard? You'll find all those prerequisite skills in the grade levels below. Well, when I was teaching last year, which was my first year in high school, I realized my kids' weaknesses were between six in eighth grade. That's where most of the skills were I had to remediate. And you'll find that some kids, even if you're teaching fifth grade, it's certain grade levels that they miss. Now, sixth grade was a very, very important grade level for algebra one because the proportionality and all those things, um, graphing and understanding uh, the quadrants, was in sixth grade. Well, a lot of my students missed that. So guess what? I had to go back and teach them the four quadrants and then connect it to the on grade level T. But you can't do that if you're using a program. Your children's work and data is supposed to guide that. That's why they say that it's a response to intervention is accelerated and it, it's geared towards getting kids on grade level. That's why that grade level teak guides you and you have to look at that grade level teak and say, what do my students need? What are they struggling with? And unpack it from there. So that's why you are response to intervention. There's not a program that I can recommend that's going to help you get your kids on grade level. You're it. And not only is response to intervention not a program, it's a collaborative process. What does that mean? That means that you're not doing it by yourself. If you cannot go down to the teachers in your grade level, you can ask any of my colleagues. I got to know the teachers below me because when I needed something, I could go down there and say, can I borrow these manipulatives? Because certain manipulatives we don't have in fifth grade. There are certain manipulatives that I need for my ninth graders in math intervention that are not at the high school. Why are they not there? Because they're, they're not for that curriculum. So we have to go down and get things from other teachers. It's a collaborative process. That's why vertical alignment and vertical alignment meetings are important if you're talking about how what instructional strategies are you needing to understand and learn because you're not going to know them all and i talk all the time about um increasing 
your toolbox. And we're talking about instructional toolbox, not necessarily toolbox um, in the sense like with tools, but your pedagogy, and if you're not familiar with that word, pedagogy just means instructional strategies. How do you get the children to learn? You have to increase that, especially when you're working with struggling learners, because you can't teach what you don't know. There was a lady in a group, she was talking about you know, well, she knows what to do when the kids, you know, she has to teach. She said, but she doesn't know any other way to teach it. And that's fair. You're not going to know. And that's why it's a collaborative process. If you are a first or second year teacher and you've only taught fifth grade, are you going to know what the third grade teacher taught? Are you going to know what the fourth grade teacher taught? You only know what you know, but if you're not collaborating with the people around you, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. So that's why I say in this blog post that math intervention, it's, it's, it's people, not programs. Because I've had to go to uh, my third grade teacher. I was like, can I get one of your textbooks? Because I had kids, that's where they were. I've had to use instructional strategies, starting with the area model, because if you your curriculum is aligned, it's going to build up to where you are. You don't even have to make it fit. That's why it's important for you to collaborate. And that brings me to this next point. If you want to read more about this blog post, you can find it at fuelgreatminds.com. Um, and it will talk more in depth about what I do in my classroom and just kind of give you some tips about how you can um, get your kids to move. Definitely, definitely read it if you're interested in this because you there is not a program. And I know I said one time uh, teaching is a buffet and one lady was like, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Because if we don't need something or we don't want it, we leave it there. If we need it, we take it. That's why you need a toolbox of strategies for your math intervention. Because, for example, I had some kids. I'm not a base 10 fan. I am not. I think base 10 blocks do not support struggling learners. And you're probably saying, well, why? That's what we use for testing. I get it. I have to teach it, but it's not something that I start out with. If my kids, so say for instance, I teach fifth grade. So base 10 blocks were introduced in second. Base 10 blocks are used in third. And then when they get to fourth grade, they use those same base 10 blocks to do decimals. And you have children that struggle with math. So I had one student, I can never forget, it's about four years ago. I was trying to get her to understand that base 10 blocks, this is a decimal. It is one tenth. She said, no, it's a 10. I said, no, it's one tenth. So a lot of the students can make the transfer. Now they may not go back and forth with you, but them not understanding that, it comes out in their work and in their product. They don't get it. So what I started to use is number disk. Number discs work a whole lot better than base 10 blocks. And the goal of math intervention, when you have that two tier two intervention going in your classroom, is to do something differently. You're not going to use the same thing. So if you're in your small group and you use base 10 blocks during your lesson, change your, your manipulative and see if that helps the student grasp the concept. Now, we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, and I think I said that in the blog post. You don't just start over. Just because you're doing a tier two intervention, that doesn't mean that you change the whole strategy. That means that, say for instance, you're using the area model. You don't change the model because they need the model. You change how you deliver the instruction. Maybe you break apart the area model and teach it a different way. For example, 
with my um, three by two multiplication. I may teach it all together in the standard algorithm when I taught it initially. That was my the first instruction. But once the kids get into small group, I break it down. I break it down into its place value. So if I have 23 times 16, I will do 23 times 6, which is the 1's place, and 23 times 10, which is the 10's place. So the kids can understand that even though when we put it together, it's still place value. It's just a shorter way. And what that algorithm does it takes out those zeros in the um, problem. That's what it, the algorithm does. It takes out the extra stuff. So you do that, not that you're not teaching the same thing. You break it down and make it different than what you did in the initial instruction, if that makes sense. So if you're one of those teachers like, well, I'm doing something different. Yeah, but different don't ne doesn't necessarily mean change your whole strategy. That's not what it means. It means that we're going to change maybe the way we word it, maybe the, the manipulatives that we use, but it does not mean start over because I promise you, if you start over, you're going to actually make it worse on the children because it's hard to go backwards when kids already have information, but, and it's easier to just take it and rearrange it to where the kids are, can't understand it. But that takes you having to analyze student work. And if you don't look at your student work, then you're going to have a problem because you're not looking at where the kids are struggling at. And that's that qualitative data. It's not numbers, which is quantitative, but that qualitative is the quality of the work with anecdotal notes, where are they struggling at? So you can take that and address it specifically to certain students in your math intervention groups. So, like I said, if you want to, um, if you want to read this blog post, you can find it at feelgreatminds.com. That is my website. As you can see, it says, hi, Michelle. And with that said, my Math Intervention Academy is opening up in July, the second week of July. And if you're not on the wait list, I'm telling you, you need to get on the wait list because I don't think I'm going to leave it open. I don't believe so. Um, I may open it again in December right before i don't think we're going to have testing but when teachers may need it again but the wait list is open i'm going to start sending out emails and stuff about it so you can learn more about it i'm excited i've been i've started putting it together um i was working on the community part which i think i love the collaboration part that i'm going to provide because a lot of teachers in rural areas, a lot of people don't know, I worked in a rural area and um, they don't have as much collaboration. They may be teaching three different preps. So this will be perfect for a teacher that maybe works in a rural area where they can have a community to come and actually um, collaborate with. Also, my community is not going to be on Facebook. It's on another private domain and where um, you don't have to be worried about somebody screenshotting your stuff. That's one of the things that I cannot stand about Facebook. Um, some of their co-workers will call them out. Teachers need to have a safe space. That's just the bottom line. We vent. And that's just what it is. We we have to have a safe. What we do every day, it's very important, but it, it it takes a lot out of us as human beings. So, you know, I've I've seen in other Facebook groups where teachers have screenshot messages and sent it to the principal. I don't get that, and I don't understand it. And um, that's something that I'm not going to tolerate in that in my community because I think it's important for us to be able to talk about things and talk about children's problems without worrying about it getting back to a principal. 
So, but the Math Intervention Academy is the wait list is open and go ahead. You can find that at um, mathinterventionacademy.com and get on that wait list and um, learn more about math intervention, the community, and how I'm going to set it up. Um, this is going to be a beta launch, meaning that you all are going to actually set the tone and how the actual academy works. And it's going to be based, structured based on your needs. So that is all I have for Teaching Tip Tuesday. Like I said, if you would like to actually read this blog post, let me put it back up here on the screen. Let me scoot over. It's at fuelgrayminds.com and it's called Math Intervention People Not Program. So I will see you all for on next Teaching Tip Tuesday or in my next live stream. You all have a good evening. Bye-bye.